today we will be learning about the historical theories of acids and bases. Now let's get started. We'll be first focusing on the historical theories. First of all, over centuries the definition of acids have changed. So over centuries what acids were known were changed. Firstly, it was known it was defined by its observable properties such as its physical properties such as its taste and how it looks like. So substances that had a sour taste were called acids. For example, lime or lemon, they're called acids because of their sour taste. Now the word, word acid was derived from the Latin word acidus, which means sour. So clearly the word even derived from its physical or observable property. Now bases, now bases are substances that tasted bitter and also felt greasy and they were known as alkalis. The difference between alkalis and bases is that bases are alkalis in aqueous solution. So practically they're the same. The word alkali was derived from the Arabic word for heated ash as most of the alkalis were made from the ash residue of burned plants. So because of this reason it was derived from the Arabic word for ash. Now let's look at how acids and bases were classified using chemistry. Firstly, we have Lavoisier, who was known as the father of chemistry. He was a French scientist and he, he showed the importance of accurate measurements. So in terms of experiments, how accuracy is very important. And also he showed that combustion involves a reaction with oxygen. He wrote the first modern chemistry textbook. So clearly you see that he did his work. His experiments on combustion led him to believe that acids were made of two different substances. One of them was oxygen. So all acids contained oxygen according to his definition, which causes the acidity and is common to all acids. He also said it contained another substance that is unique to each acid. So the other substance depended on the acid, while oxygen was always there. Now Humphrey Davy came after Lavoisier and he refined uh, um, Lavoisier's definition of the acid. Davy was an English scientist and he is famous for his experiments on electrolysis. Electrolysis is converting electrical energy to chemical energy. He also discovered a number of elements using electrolysis. Now he showed that all acids do not contain oxygen, stating that hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, does not contain any oxygen. So as you can see, he discovered hydrochloric acid and as a result, he had to defy Lavoisier's definition of acids because hydrochloric acid doesn't contain any oxygen. Then he refined Lavoisier's definition. He proposed that acids contain replaceable hydrogen atoms as hydrogen was evolved when acids attacked metal. So when metals react with acids, we know that hydrogen gas is given off. So clearly what he said was all acids contain hydrogen. Then came Arrhenius. Now Arrhenius was a Swedish scientist and in 1884 he was able to refine Davy's definition of the acid. So he was able to refine it. He built upon it saying that an acid is a substance that ionizes in water to produce hydrogen ions as the only positive ions. Now let's take a look here. We have the hydrochloric molecules producing hydrogen ions and chloride ions. As you can see, the hydrogen ions are the only positive ions, while the chloride ions are negative. So that's how he proposed acids behave. He also said bases, a base is a substance that ionizes in water to produce hydroxide ions as the only negative ion. So we have a base here, we have sodium hydroxide. And the sodium hydroxide ionizes to form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. In there, the hydroxide ion is a negative ion. So this was Arrhenius's definition of an acid, of a base. 
He observed that acidic solutions were able to conduct electricity. So what he said, because of the presence of ions, he was able to conduct electricity. The acidic acid solutions were able to release hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. So when you dissolve hydrogen ions in water, the acid would um, dissolve to form hydrogen ions, as you can see. He also proposed that a base was a substance that produced hydroxide ions in solution. Now his work and the pH concept. If you remember back, pH is the concentration of hydrogen ions. His work was very important for the pH concept because he introduced this idea of hydrogen ions and pH stands, stands for the potential hydrogen. The pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration. In other words, what he said was that the higher the pH or the higher the pH, the lower the concentration of hydrogen. While lower the pH, as, as in towards zero, the higher the concentration of hydrogens. So stronger acids have a greater degree of ionization. In other words, they readily ionize in water to form hydrogen ions. This is strong acids and weak acids have a lower degree of ionization. Further, he explained the ion behavior in neutralization reactions. But let's take a look. Here we have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions forming water. If you look at this, this is the basis of a neutralization reaction and that's where hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions from the base react to form water. Now in a neutralization reaction, remember it's an acid-base reaction, right? So the hydrogen ions from the acid and the hydroxide ions from the base would react to form water and water is a product of the neutralization reaction along with the salt. So clearly this is a basis of the neutralization reaction except excluding the salt and the ions. Now, with Arrhenius's theory of acids and bases, he had some limitations. One was only applies to aqueous solutions. So he did not explain gas or any other uh, states but aqueous. He also only accounted for substances that already have hydrogen or hydroxide ions in their structure. It did not explain why some salts act as acids and some as bases. So for example, ammonia, it doesn't have any hydroxide, but it's a base. So he did not explain why it is a base. And he also didn't explain how salts can act as acids or bases. He wasn't able to explain how amph amphiprotic substances can act both as acids and bases. Now these substances, they can donate or accept protons. So we'll be looking at this later on but amphiprotic substances they they are able to act as acids and bases and Arrhenius's theory did not explain that because Arrhenius had a very defined rule for acids and bases acids donate produce um, hydrogen ions and bases they produce hydroxide ions so let's just look back at what we learned we learned about the theories of uh, acids during history first we came across Lavoisier and then we came across Davy, who said that all acids have hydrogen. Then we went to Arrhenius, who said that acids produce hydrogen ions and bases produce hydroxide ions in solution. So looking at some questions, we have question one. Antoine Lavoisier was a French chemist who thought that all acids contain oxygen. On what did he base this idea? So we have four options. Was it that metals react with acids? He did not base it on metals reacting with acids because metals reacting with acids would produce hydrogen. And this was Davy's basis. Going to B, option B is acids neutralized bases. Now Arrhenius was able to um, explain the ion behavior in a neutralization reaction. So this was Arrhenius's basis. So B isn't the answer. 
D. The newly discovered gas oxygen produces carbon dioxide on combustion. Now this is not to do with the acid definition, so clearly D is incorrect. Moving to C, non-metal oxides form acids in solution. So for example, carbon dioxide in water would produce carbonic acid and that was acidic. So clearly he based it was that non-metal oxides would form acids. And that's why he said that all acids contain oxygen. So C is the answer. Moving to question two. Lavoisier's idea that all acids contain oxygen was shown to be incorrect. Which of the following discoveries led to this conclusion? Again, we have four options here. Is it option A, which is many new oxygen containing compounds were not acids? Now, this is not very clear. And again, many new oxygen containing compounds were not acid. That wasn't the correct answer. They discovered something that did not contain oxygen but was an acid. That's how they went. So A is incorrect. Going to B, HCN was discovered and did not contain oxygen. Now HCN was quite lately discovered. It wasn't discovered readily or when Davy found it. So clearly HCN wasn't what um, defied Lavoisier's idea. Moving to D, all of the above. When you're going to consider this, you should always read all your options. So D isn't the answer because C, electrolysis of hydrochloric acid showed that it was made of hydrogen and chlorine. So hydrochloric acid when in water would produce hydrogen and chlorine. In other words, it doesn't have any oxygen attached to it. That makes Lavoisier's idea incorrect. So C is the answer. Moving to question three now. Which of the following correctly describes Davy's definition of an acid? Now, if you remember back, what was Davy's definition? He said that all acids have hydrogen. We again have four options. It's not the first one because that was Lavoisier's definition. C, acids react with metals. Now, that was not a property of, it's a property of acid. It's not a definition of an acid. D acids are oxides of non-metals. This is a basis of acids. So Lavoisier based his theory on this. It wasn't a definition. B was that acids contain replaceable hydrogen and that is correct. That's what Davy proposed as his definition of an acid. So B is the correct answer. Now moving to question four. The theories of Lavoisier and Davy were based on practical observations. Whereas of Alhenius was based on theoretical ideas. Discuss this statement. Now here the key verb is discuss. So in other words, you have to critically analyze and discuss this statement. So when you're going about doing that, you would say that Lavoisier base, based his theory on the observations of experiments because he performed many experiments that showed that when a non-metal oxide reacts with water, it produces an acid. He noticed that non-metal metals underwent combustion to produce oxides. In other words, for example, carbon with oxygen would produce carbon dioxide and these oxides dissolved in water to form acid solutions. This led him to think that acids contain oxygen. So this was his basis. Then we have Davy who based his theory on observations of the products obtained from electrolysis. Now this is again an experiment he did. And his displacement of hydrogen from acids by metals. So clearly he did his experiments to show his theory and based his theory upon those. Arrhenius, however, based his idea or his concepts about the types of particles in acids and bases. He was more um, theoretical in, in the sense that he studied the components of acids and bases and he observed the behavior of them. That's how he came across, he uh, proposed his concept of acids and bases. Now that's how you would discuss this statement. Now moving to question five. Outline three limitations of Arrhenius's definition of acids and bases. In this case it says outline so you have to briefly describe in other words briefly describe so outline is to briefly describe and state them
clearly. So if you're going about writing, answering this question, I would prefer you doing it in dot points so it's very neat and concise. Arrhenius' definition of acids and bases is useful, but it has limited. It has limitations because it applies only to aqueous solutions. Now, because he did not co uh, consider gases or solids, it only accounts for substances which already have hydrogen or hydroxide ions in their structure and does not explain why some salts act as acids and some as bases. Now with this, he did not consider ammonia which was a base and it did not contain any hydroxide. And also he didn't explain how salts have acidic or basic characteristics. The third dot point is that it cannot explain how some substances described as amphiprotic, example zinc oxide and aluminium oxide and the hydrogen carbonate ion can act as both acids and bases. So he wasn't able to dis, um, define all these things. And because of this, his definition was limited. Now this is concluding our lesson today. We covered the history, historical theories of acids and bases. We first looked at Lavoisier's theory where he talked about oxygen being a component of acids. And then we looked at Davy who said that all acids contain hydrogen. And lastly, we looked at Arrhenius who said that acids produce hydrogen ions and bases produce hydroxide ions. Thank you.